Thank you everyone for subscribing to Infinitely Productions. If it is you have not done so, please click the bell and subscribe and we hope you enjoy our content. Warning, warning. The following video is intended for educational and entertainment use only. The content will include disturbing images, violent scenarios, and explicit language. This video is intended for 18 plus and older audiences. As our Judd Rose found out, it can be a world of ordinary people cut up in extraordinary crimes and somewhere in a suburb near you. Philadelphia, cradle of liberty, city of brotherly love. And until not so long ago, home to one of the bloodiest mob wars since the days of Al Capone. If you accept that at, at its high point there were 60 members in the Philadelphia family, between 1980 and 1985 there were about 30 wise guys killed and another 30 went to jail. So per capita it's probably one of the most violent mafia families in America. The family feud that began with the 1980 murder of godfather Angelo Bruno spilled into the 90s, each rub out provoking the next. What are your plans at this point? What are my plans? To find out who did it and kill them. It was the stuff of a Martin Scorsese movie, but even he couldn't have imagined a story where one of the wise guys was a wise gal, Brenda Coletti. She was the wife of mob hitman Phil Coletti. How many people did your husband kill? He's killed two people. You said there were a couple of times when you could have potentially killed somebody. Oh yeah, well I've had conversations with other people about uh, actually pulling the trigger. Would you have? Would I have? Could you have? That's a hard question. I might have. I might have. She did come close to murder, once planning to kill a rival wise guy, skinny Joey Merlino, by slipping cyanide in his drink. Her husband stopped her then, but she did help him burn a car he'd used in a mob hit, lied to the cops to back up his alibis, and stashed his weapons. All this while living in a quiet Philadelphia suburb where the neighbors knew them as an average couple raising their little boy, Pauly. On a normal day, it was we'd be out mowing the lawn and barbecuing and playing with Pauly and the dog, and it was so normal, it was great. And then there was other days where we'd have people over the house, um, bring in MAC-10s with silencers for Philip to fix, and uh, at, a, at one point we had a bomb in the house. A bomb? We had a bomb in the house. There really was. It was two lives. She describes herself as a country girl from Massachusetts, but there was trouble for Brenda Coletti right from the start. She dropped out of high school and was arrested several times for carrying a gun. She married young and ended up working in bars and clubs on the fringes of Philadelphia. I couldn't make it on a minimum wage job, and I started dancing, and... What kind of dancing are you talking about? Stripping, uh, that sort of thing? Right. Yeah. Um, it's not something I'm proud of, but at that time, I did what I had to do to keep my family alive and going. In 1989, she left her husband for Phil Coletti. They married a year later. Coletti was an unemployed plumber with a mean streak. He'd once shot a man dead in a dispute over a parking space, and he'd grown up on the streets of South Philadelphia. Well, I'm, you know, most of the guys that are wise guys grew up and come out of this neighborhood. George Anastasia covers the mob for the Philadelphia Inquirer and is a consultant for prime time on this story. Yeah, I mean, you know, a guy on the corner who's booking numbers. I mean, so he's booking numbers and he knows somebody who knows somebody. And to you, he's a guy on the corner. I and, mean, you know, uh, you grow up around it, you don't think anything of it. Phil Coletti began working as a soldier for the crime family of John Stanfa. At first, it was a good life for a mafia wife. It's a, it's a power trip. You know, you can just walk in somewhere and, and they seat you right away and they just wait on you hand and foot and you, you feel like king and queen. And uh, that was nice, you know. So there were a, some attractive things about being involved oh, yeah. with the mob. Oh, yeah. A lot of people... Um, fear you and they respect you and that's all pa part of that power trip and it just keeps you going. Police this afternoon combed the shooting scene at 6th and Catherine for evidence. 
In 1993, a bloody power struggle erupted between the Stanfa clan and the rival Merlino faction. On August 5th, Joey Merlino and one of his soldiers were ambushed outside their clubhouse in South Philly. Merlino was wounded. The other man was killed. Phil Coletti was one of the two trigger men. Weren't you shocked? Weren't you uh, distressed? Yeah, I was shocked. I was. There was a lot of thoughts running through my head. Um, at the time, honestly, one of the thoughts was, "Yeah, we got one." You know, it's it, we were in the middle of a war. It was a war. It was them or us. Brenda Coletti became her husband's partner in crime. You carried a gun all the time, right? All the time. And at night, I sleep. we both had one under the mattress, under his side and one under my side. That's right. And you were prepared to use it? In a heartbeat. She says she never actually did pull the trigger, but admits helping plan some of the rub-outs with Phil and other stand for hitmen. Plans that often had a way of going wrong. Wrong shells in a shotgun. They walk up to a guy, point the shotgun, pull the trigger, nothing happened. Uh, they stole a car one time to do a hit, and, and they couldn't get the car started that morning, so they couldn't use it. There was another hit where they used the car leased in their own name. You know, one of the lawyers said, good fellas, this is dumb fellas. Either way, they were not all fellas. Brenda was no mobster's mall, not a typical mafia wife who stays in the background. She was a player. Once she was summoned to a rare audience, rare for a woman, with the godfather, John Stanfa. I was honored. I mean, I'm a female, and he's talking to me about doing something illegal. I mean, and just... Being around all that power was just, it was very rare. It was, it was a thrill. But it wasn't. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel and check out more of our content. Feel free to give your feedback and suggestions on what we should do next in the comments. This is Infinite Lee Productions. We love you.